So my name is Rafael Michelski. I'm a photographer and a beautiful video artist. And I am here to show my work on uh, creating an architectural documentation of the Alaska Mosque using social media. So I started, I started my work with uh, the question of how to create an image for uh, that would uh, properly convey uh, complicated buildings, buildings that are uh, contested, buildings that are the center of a dispute, and uh, buildings that are used in extreme ways. Uh, I found all of this in a good good case study here in Jerusalem, the al Mosque. And uh, also it was important that the building would be documented by many people, and this was also the case with the al Mosque. Um, for me, the al Mosque is a limited territory, including the compound surrounding it. And um, this uh, limitation has... Uh, it was an opportunity for me to study it not on my own terms, but through the media that other people created. And I was interested in what kind of image of a building would emerge from this kind of limited study. So, okay, so this is, for example, an Im a proper architectural image of the mouse showing its uh, eastern facade. But it's, uh, when I was uh, Starting my study in, in the architectural <coughs> department and moved to photography and at that time I was curious on um, what kind of photographs can be created for buildings that are not just another uh, representation of the architectural design. And uh, pictures that are the accumulation of the ways people uh, picture building, use building and move inside and around it. Um, I will go a little bit to history to show my method and how it's connected with the history of photography. So uh, I see images as uh, a surface at the edge of a view pyramid that we can see here. Uh, every image is just is a, at the pinnacle of this uh, three-dimensional space that it captures and we can see here this map that shows uh, it shows the location of uh, photographs in uh, a collection of photographs, stereographs from uh, traveling in the Holy Land by Jesse Lehman Robo, Robo. and uh, it's a collection of stere stereographs that shows Jerusalem and uh, taken by the Andrew Brothers at 1900. And the uh, stereograph, it works by uh, imitating, it creates a sense of uh, 3D space by imitating the way our eyes work. It's, uh, the, the two images are taken from a little bit of a diff different locations. And when we use a... Okay, so this video is not working because I did a PDF and not part of my presentation, but these two images, when combined, Sorry for the they show us, they give us a sense of depth and with the special, with special equipment, the stereoscope, we can, uh, this device merges the two images and gives us a sense of depth. This was used uh, in the beginning of the 20th century for what is called couch tourism. And and the method I use is the multiplication of this effect. I, I take, uh, I explore the social media uh, following uh, specific uh, media channels and hashtags and collect videos that were shot inside and around the Alexa Mosque. And I'm looking for uh, videos that shows a movement inside the mosque, for example. So 
So this video uh, depicting an event of uh, security, Israeli security forces entering the, the mosque by force. But it also the, the photographer is moving inside the mosque. And for me, it's, this, this works the same way as the two photographs from the stereoscope. It gives uh, two uh, different images of the same space from different locations. And I take those... I take the video and divide it into all the, fr the different frames and then put it into the photogrammetry software. This is the name of the, the technology that I know you already been, was already described to you today. And what the program does, it looks for points of interest within the images and comparing them with the rest of the images and through those small uh, changes of the relations of the, the points, it can uh, understand the, the space that the, the image depicts. Uh, so what you see is the 3D representation of those of the points that it found here. And at the same time, you can see the locations where the camera was standing, the movement of the camera through space, and So this uh, process gave me all kinds of uh, aesthetic results and works that I presented. This, for example, is just uh, a movement of a camera in kind of a long exposure. And this is... Um, I hope this works. interesting in this process is to try and see what kind of what, what would be what would look like this kind of uh, documentation that not only um, tries to depict the architecture but uh, is aware of the, the process of documentation by by people who use this building. It's hard to use without a without a mouse. There is a mouse here. So for me, it was kind of the, the, all the, the different results was kind of a dec architectural documentation file, uh, the future of some kind that um, all the all the move on from this. All the results were a bit uh, clumsy and low quality. These are different details from the building and from uh, a chandelier, a street. Uh, the entrance to the mosque, the dome that we saw earlier in another version. So all these uh, results are very low quality, low polygon, uh, they have a low polygon count, and uh, they're, they're, because they're the result of poor images, poor images that were shot by uh, non-professional, by uh, using amateur cameras, uh, they were edited, labeled with a watermark, and shared through the internet, and their quality was further and further uh, reduced, and uh, I will quote from uh, the, quote, the condition of the images speak not only 
of campus transfers and reform reformatting, but also the countless people who care enough about them to convert them over and over again to add subtitles, re-edit, and upload them. This, this is a quote from Peter Stiel in an essay in defense of poor images. Um, one of the works was this model, which shows the entire uh, collection of models that I collected and assembled into the entire compound of the Alexa mask. I will show a piece of video work. So we're right now inside this model, and it's a video of 10 minutes, so much of the 10 minutes, but we are uh, at each part, we are taking the position of a different camera that I modeled from on the internet. This is based on, based on the video we shot? Yeah, on uh, many, many, on many videos. But it is one. So again, I would, uh, just in case I was not clear, I download the videos, I model the surrounding that they photograph, and also the movement of the camera itself through space. I assemble this entire model from those specific tiny models, and what we are seeing right now is those movement of cameras. For the, for the models. It looks like after a catastrophe it happened. <laughs> yeah, there are some catastrophes as well. Uh, it includes also a few videos from the surrounding streets. And if you if it was enough for you, I can continue to another video. This was actually the first work that I made. What are we seeing here? Mm -hmm. What are we seeing? Okay, so what I did here was uh, for the first for the first work, first work I just uh, started with this uh, technique and uh, I found a few videos of the of riots inside the mosque. Um, Uh, I, before that work, I had no knowledge at all about what, what does it mean that there is a riot, it's being reported there is a riot inside the Alexa mosque, and I heard many reports about uh, how violent it is, but I didn't really understand uh, how, it is, how it is working, and I found these few videos, I used them to build a model, it's a virtual 3D model of the entrance to the mosque from the inside. 
and then I projected those videos into the model. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the conflict that is taking place always around the, those few doors between the protesters and the Israeli police. And it's just one minute repeating. about the you know, creating art around you know, sites of conflict. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a conflict, isn't it? Yeah. So w w why did you choose to work on, on, on uh, such studies from the, from the beginning? Uh, it was most, most rich with material and it was really I was just looking for that example and I was thinking about the idea and what I wanted to explore. I had something, I had a few ideas in mind, but I mean, none of them uh, was... Uh, this, uh, it's a building that is really being used in this uh, context of conflict because they use the, the yeah. protest, the police, they're all using the architecture in a way. And architecture is playing a significant role in those clashes. I have a quick question. Um, in Laksa, is, there are riots, but usually it's a place of prayer and meditating, internal place of relaxation for Muslim people. So the way it's depicted here is a very extreme way, I mean. Did, did you consider bringing the combination of the prayer and the quiet and peace? Yeah. Uh, also, not only on a religious context, but also it's just uh, what I saw was an open space that people use it in many ways also for prayer and study, but uh, a really open and free space inside the city. And actually, most of the video I used were just really normal videos. Um, and I had doubts about that uh, along the process. Um, that, that that's uh, for now how the work uh, what what is the, the result. But we, we can also assume that when there are riots, there the place becomes more visible. I, mean, I guess that you wouldn't find so many pictures, videos of people only praying or or having the day-to-day -day routines in the in the mosque. Maybe I'm wrong. Actually, there are many sure, of both. Many, many of both. Yeah. Wasn't the idea like uh, creating, compiling uh, data that is like uh, uh, fragmented into something that is whole? So I mean, when you have a lot of data, is you have already a video of the area, so modeling it is like less relevant. Whereas if you don't have a lot of data, then that's where your uh, idea should come in hand. You know, like uh, creating the. Mm -hmm visualizing the uh, present uh, moment as it is where you don't have a lot of data. So you like use a lot of data to create this, but can you do this without a lot of data? Without a lot of data. Uh, yes, I can create uh, some. The data I had was uh, not the data. I would, I would say it's not a, a lot of data because, uh, as I said, it's like uh, um, data based on uh, the, those poor images yeah. and low quality images in a, of a place that I cannot access to okay. and um, document on my own. And so for me, it's uh, it's a place that exists, but at the same time, I don't have access to. So, so the idea is to create a better uh, visualization of what you have. At the moment, which is like in a world in not the quality, <laughs> yeah, or 
Uh, it's to explore what kind of uh, images would really be created in this kind of process of using this kind of material being taken by uh, regular people and uh, in a context of a conflict. Thanks very much.